Hi there. In today's video, I'll be conducting a stress test on three Bofeng models. The UV-9R, the GT-3WP, and the UV-5R. The stress test will consist of mixing the radios in a bucket of sand, leaving them outdoors packed in snow overnight, a drop test from three feet, a dunk tank, and if they survive all of that, I'll fire a round of number eight birdshot at them from a distance of approximately 25 feet. Both the UV-9R and GT-3WP are ingress protection rated for dust and water, while the UV-5R is not. Although the UV-5R is not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison to the other two IP-rated HTs, the reason I'm including it in this stress test is depending on who you ask, there are people who will tell you the UV-5R is junk and not to waste your money on purchasing one. I've never been a proponent of looking down on the equipment someone else has, especially if you're looking for a serviceable radio to start out with on a budget. I think this will be an interesting test to see how the UV-5R holds up against IP-rated radios for those who already own a UV-5R or are looking to purchase one. I'll post a link in the description below that explains IP ratings in more detail, but both the UV-9R and GT-3WP are advertised as having an IP67 rating. What that means for those two radios is they are totally protected against dust and against the effects of immersion at a depth of one meter. Aside from the IP ratings, the functionality of the UV-9R and GT-3WP are comparable to that of the UV-5R in that they operate on the same frequency range, have the same 128 channel capacity and menu functions. When selecting the radios for this stress test, I noticed there's another variant of the UV-9R which has a designation of UV-9G and that appears to be a GMRS only radio in that it's limited to the GMRS frequency range. That radio, which is not included in this stress test, is also IP67 rated. So I'm going to unbox these radios, and after I finish, I'll program each one to my 2-meter repeater. Following each test, I'll confirm if the HTs are still able to transmit and receive, and I will report on the results before the next test. Okay, I have the UV-9R GT3WP and UV-5R all programmed and ready for the stress test. I confirmed each radio is functioning as expected and I'm able to transmit and receive. For the first test, I'm going to mix the radios in this bucket of sand. I'm not expecting anything catastrophic for this test. I think all that's gonna happen is the, the grains will get into the area around the knob and in the keypad and we'll probably just add some friction when attempting to work the volume and buttons. Other than that, this should be a pretty easy test. First up will be this UV-5R, and then the UV-9R, and then the GT-3WP. And uh, after I mix these radios around in the sand, I'll uh, pull them out, and then right before the next test, I'll report the results. But they should, uh, they should be able to transmit and receive just fine. So we'll start with this one and throw this into the sand. And then next is the UV-9R, and again, the UV-5R, that's not IP rated, but the UV-9R and GT-3WPR, so those should not have any issues with, with the sand. And last is the GT-3WP, also IP rated. So. Uh, these two, the UV-9R and GT-3WP, have the same IP67 rating. So I'll let those uh, just kind of marinate for a second, and then uh, 
I'll let you know what happens uh, right before the, the next test. Okay, so following the sand test, I can report that each of the radios still function and they're able to transmit and receive. Uh, the grains did get into the, the keypad and um, around the speaker and the knob, but that's really about it. And the next test will be to see how the radios hold up when I leave them packed in snow overnight. The temperature in my area tonight will be a low of 28 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're expecting some light snowfall. So I'll pack these in here, put them outside, and tomorrow I'll check on their condition, and I'll report the status right before the next test. So we'll start with the UV-5R and pack that in there. The next is the UV-9R. And then the GT3WP. Okay, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Following the snow test, I can report all three radios are still functioning as expected. They transmit and receive just fine. The volume knobs and buttons are a little stiff from being out in the cold overnight, but that's the only noticeable issue. The next test is the dunk tank, and then the drop test, and the last test will be the number eight shot. Okay, first up in the tank will be the UV-9R, then the GT-3WP, and then the UV-5R, and right before I put each radio in the tank, I will turn on the weather channel just to verify that each radio still works and I'll leave them in the tank for about 15 minutes and then after that I'll, I'll pull them out and see if they're still functioning as expected and on the UV-9R and GT-3WP we're looking to confirm if that IP rating is as advertised. So uh, first up is the UV-9R and you can see that it still works so I'll put that in here. Then the GT3WP, and that one's still functioning. And then the UV5R. And we'll leave those in there and come back in about 15 minutes. After pulling the radios out of the dunk tank, I let them dry for a little over 24 hours. And before I jump into the drop test, which is next, I had some notes that I made that I wanted to share with you briefly. And the first radio I want to talk about is the UV-5R. And to recap, there were no issues with the sand test, no issues with the radio being packed in snow and left outside overnight. During the dunk test, this was the first radio to show signs of being affected by immersion. Air bubbles were observed leaking from the keypad, as well as the sides of the radio almost immediately after entering the tank. After about two minutes of being in the tank, the radio's display and the light on top went dark, and after I let the radio dry, it was still able to power up using the same battery that was in the tank, the speaker transmit, and receive all still appear to function. And the only issue is there's some distortion to the display from water damage. But after drying out, the radio is able to power up and it still works. And so I would say it passed that test. Next is the GT3WP. And again, with this radio, no issues with the sand test, no issues with being left in snow outside overnight. However, during the dunk test, this was the second radio to show signs of being affected by immersion. After about five minutes, the display began to malfunction. At around 10 minutes, the light on top of the radio went dark. And after 15 minutes, the display went dark and I could observe air bubbles coming out of the keypad. And it looked to me like air bubbles were coming out of the number one and number three keys. After drying out, it was able to briefly power up, I'd say for maybe two or three seconds, using the same battery. However, the display is heavily distorted from water damage. The speaker no longer appears to function, and there was quite a bit of water 
inside the radio. And when I pulled the radio out, it looked to me like quite a bit was leaking from the battery compartment. And so when I pulled the battery out, I noticed a small stream of water coming from the corner of this, this label. So I peeled the label back and there is a hole in the back of this radio. And it looks like normally this, this little seal right here covers that hole. And I don't know if perhaps that seal failed or if maybe there's a seal inside of the radio that's not properly seated because the next radio, the UV-9R fared much better. And it looks to me like these radios are almost identical in their construction. And again, with this radio, same thing, no issues with the sand, no issues with uh, being packed in snow overnight. And this was the last radio to show signs of being affected by immersion. After five minutes in the tank, there were no observable issues. After 10 minutes in the tank, again, no issues. And after 15 minutes, the display and light on top of the radio continued to function. After drying out, it was still able to power up using the same battery. The speaker, transmit, and receive all appear to function. And the only issue with this one, same thing with the UV-5R, is there's... There's some, still some condensation in the uh, display and some distortion from uh, a little bit of water damage, but that's really about it. The GT3WP I mentioned has the same IP rating. IP67 is the UV9R. The UV5R is not IP rated. Because the GT3WP failed, I'm almost wondering if this one's a little bit of an outlier because... The construction does appear to be the same as the UV-9R. I could be wrong, but they look to be very, very similar radios. And I think that this radio may not be indicative of this, of this model. This one just may have failed. But the UV-9R and UV-5R, those have passed. And I will include them in the final two tests if, if they make it that far. I'll pull the GT3WP out because um, there's really nothing to observe at this point. So uh, next will be the drop test. Okay, the first radio will be the UV9R. I'll drop it three times from a height of three feet, and then I will do the UV5R, but I've got it on the weather channel, and I'll just turn it up so you can hopefully hear this. So um, you can see that it's working. So I'll start the drop test. There's one, two, and three. And it still appears to be working. Although the audio is a little bit distorted, but I can hear the weather channel. Next is the UV5R. So you can see that one's working, so I will drop that one now. and it's still ticking. For the last test, I'll be using two and three quarter inch federal number eight shot for my 12 gauge pump shotgun. According to the specifications I researched on the internet, this ammunition travels at a velocity of 1,145 feet per second, and the effective range is around 25 to 30 feet. Number eight shot has 410 pellets and is a popular round for clay pigeon shooting, as well as hunting small games such as rabbit, squirrel, doves, and apparently now bowfang radios. 
I chose this round because I didn't want to use something that was overkill, so I picked number eight to see what kind of penetration a light shotgun round would achieve. I think using a common round makes sense, and if all else fails, hopefully this is an entertaining way to wrap up the video. Okay, first up for the number eight bird shot is the UV-9R, and I got my ears on, let's go. Okay, next is the UV-5R. Following the number 8 shot test, I can confirm that the UV-9R and UV-5R appear to have survived in that they're still able to power up, transmit, and receive, although some functionality has been lost. I'll start with the UV-9R, and the number 8 shot sheared off the antenna as well as the cover for the, um, the light on top, and when I brought the radio back, I had to put another antenna on it so I could confirm if it would transmit and receive, but the base of the antenna, I don't know if you can see that very well, broke off inside the top of the radio here. And as a side note, if you ever have an antenna that shears off, how I got this out was I took a uh, razor blade and I dug it into the uh, piece that was broken off and I, I just unscrewed it and twisted it out. So. That is how I got that out of there. It seems to have been stuck on the last channel I left it on, which luckily was my two meter repeater, not the weather channel, because when I press some of the buttons on the keypad, they don't appear to work. So, but it does, does transmit and receive. Next up is the UV5R, and that one also transmits and receives on my two meter repeater, although I am able to still operate some of the uh, buttons on the keypad. It did uh, shear off the bezel around the display as well as the volume knob. Otherwise, it still functions, but the display is totally um, malfunctioning now. It doesn't uh, really display any information at this point. So that is pretty much it for this video. I hope that uh, hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.